Does this is okay as okay. two speakers? Okay, cool. Then we started recording. Um, hello, everyone. It's uh, so nice to have you today uh, in this webinar, How to Win the SME Banking Battleground with Technology Partners. My name is Katalin Kausli. I am a co-founder and business development director uh, at Partner Hub LTD. And I have uh, Ambar Vitali uh, with me, who is um, responsible for strategic partnerships at Naya One. Uh, first hi, Kathleen. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Yeah, hi, Ambar. First of all, just a couple of organizational uh, things. Uh, we will have the webinar. If you have any questions, please uh, type it into the chat box and we will answer the questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, just a brief introduction from both of us. Uh, first of all, Partner Hub uh, enables banks and financial service providers to orchestrate and participate in open finance and open data ecosystems by integrating financial services and invoicing. And how we do this, we have a white label SME invoicing technology, which can be embedded into online and mobile banking channels. And we think that there is a huge uh, potential in SME banking today. That's why we are, among others, that's why we are doing this uh, uh, webinar today. Uh, we also have an invoice presentment layer which can be used uh, both for retail and SME customers and uh, we can uh, integrate invoicing and request to pay for onboarding corporate customers into request to pay and we are on the Naya One platform and we are very happy to have Ambar uh, here today. Uh, Ambar, uh, please explain to us how does Nayavan bring bank fintechs together for innovation through its digital transformation platform? Of course, thanks Kathleen. So Nayavan is the fastest way for banks and fintechs to connect and partner. We do this through our digital transformation platform, which is comprised of three different components. The first is the fintech marketplace that Kathleen mentioned earlier. That is a marketplace of 300 technically integrated fintechs that are able to view with their use cases. The next part is the synthetic data marketplace. So this is a marketplace of 2.5 billion data points. It comprises of publicly available data, synthetic data, and proprietary data. The next part is the digital sandboxes that are secured with a layer of governance and controls. And what this platform actually enables people to do is to discover fintechs and to evaluate them and run POCs using our data. So a bank can evaluate a FinTech without actually onboarding them. So you can reach a POC in four to six weeks. Wow, that's wonderful. And um, please explain to us how are banks and regulators worldwide using uh, Naya One platform to host uh, hackathons and tax prints? So how you can uh, uh, support banks and regulators with hackathons and tax prints? Of course, so our primary use case is supporting banks and regulators with innovation labs. The first part of that is sort of, yeah, high street banks in the UK that are using Nail One to discover fintechs, build out customer journeys, build out product propositions and scale them to production. The second part is a use case like the FCA's digital sandbox. So we power that for the UK regulator. Within that, they run cohorts, tech sprints, and it's a great opportunity to empower responsible, in the, responsible innovation. We also power the UK's digital identity sandbox, which is used to generate policy surrounding digital trans, sorry, policy surrounding digital identity. And that is in partnership with the Department of Science, Innovation and Technology. Yeah, and what do we do in the US? We've recently launched in the US with Valley Bank, who are based out of New Jersey, and we are powering their innovation hub, which enables them to discover fintech solutions. So they might go in with a particular use case. They can find fintechs to solve that use case. 
they can experiment with them. Banks are able to compare one fintech against another or are able to stitch together multiple fintechs to build out a customer journey and product proposition. That's all sound very, that all sounds very exciting. And later on, Ambar will uh, explain to us, us how Naya One supports uh, SME banking use cases. But before we do that, uh, I thought it would be useful to have a look at the SME banking market and the SME banking trends. What are the trends that are influencing both banks and SMEs in terms of uh, SME banking? First of all, uh, it's very important to say this. I think uh, a lot of you, you might have heard a lot of times that SMEs traditionally have been underserved by banks. A couple of statistics on this, 47% of SMEs uh, believe that their banks don't try to understand their challenges. Uh, we at Partner Hub did an analysis and found that only 14% of total SME funding needs are met globally. And with respect to the future, uh, 70% of the economic outgrowth will be created by ecosystems in coming decades and SME needs will be served by SME ecosystems and banks will need to find their way in these ecosystems. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Uh, why SMEs are so important? SMEs are the backbone of the economy. You can see on the figures, uh, but in each country they may uh, major role both in employment and GDP contribution. Uh, what makes them uh, difficult to serve is it's a diverse crowd, but mostly the retail like uh, small customers making up the larger part of the customers. As I mentioned, they are already they are underserved, uh, but at this but this also means that there is a substantial uh, growth potential in the segment, so it's worth uh, looking at it. And the good news is that technology enables decreasing the service costs uh, substantially. Uh, a McKinsey study found that uh, 20 to 30 uh, percent of uh, cost uh, efficiency uh, can be gained on digitize, digitizing, for example, the lending customer journey. So there is a place, space to grow and there is a huge uh, potential in the SME segment. Catalan, just on that, what do you think banks can do to sort of better support and better serve their SME customers? Yeah, I think the key is to First of all, there are a couple of things. So SMEs, first of all, need to understand, or banks need to understand the SME problems. And uh, banks also need to understand from the short term to the long term profitability. So uh, mindset changes needed from uh, from the banks, from the product perspective to the customer perspective. Uh, because if we look at the SME priorities, uh, banking as such is nowhere, but they have issues like growing the business, they need to manage talent, they need to manage their supply chain and where bank, banks can have uh, also uh, uh, relevance. Managing the cash flow is a crucial thing for SMEs and also taking care of administrative tasks. You can see also uh, that uh, time is of essence for SMEs, uh, because SMEs spend a lot of time and resources on non-core activities. So any value proposition that can help the SME to uh, save time on the non-core activities, such as banking, lending, financing, managing cash flow, administrative tasks, then this will bring them huge efficiency gains in the core business. Uh, SMEs are experiencing a tough time uh, these days. Uh, first of all, the cost of living crisis uh, on the revenue side, inflation hits SMEs on the cost side and also uh, on the uh, financing side. 
And on the investment side, a lot of SMEs uh, face uh, challenges with conversion to uh, net zero. So these are the things that SMEs need help with and uh, also a focus uh, on the industry specifics and the uh, SME life cycle uh, provides a better understanding about the needs of the SME customer. On the other uh, hand, SMEs are willing to share more data about themselves. So if banks can use this uh, data to provide a better service uh, for SMEs, then those banks can really gain uh, market share on the SME market. Another thing uh, to consider is that because of the COVID, the digital transformation has also happened in the SME segment. So during the pandemic, SMEs uh, both turned to digital business models, they are leveraging e-commerce and marketplace platforms. And at the same time, uh, they are also expecting to be served uh, digitally. So banks also need to take account to this, that the traditional SME banking model uh, is not viable anymore. However, uh, banks should also uh, consider that uh, the SMEs are diverse, so they would, should be able to serve uh, all kinds of SMEs. However, as I mentioned, uh, it's also good news because uh, with the technology and digitization of the customer journeys, uh, the SME segment becomes a viable segment to serve because the banks can cut their service costs on this. You can see a couple of statistics. I won't read them all, but the most important uh, thing is that uh, almost 70% of uh, small SME customers uh, think that uh, digital capabilities from a service providers are key uh, to, in serving SMEs. Uh, another factor that banks also need to consider is that uh, competition is increasing and uh, digital banks have an edge. SMEs are loyal to their banks, but digital experience matters and banks won't be able to keep their customers if they don't keep up with the pace of the digital changes. There are challengers, there are other types of market players that are tapping into the uh, SME banking market. Uh, again, just a couple of numbers. Uh, in the UK, less than 25% of UK SMEs switched their main bank in the past years. On the other hand, uh, according to an Ernst & Young study, uh, 32 billion uh, US dollars of SME banking revenue could shift from traditional banking offerings to uh, embedded finance experiences in the next 18 months. So that's uh, shocking uh, in the view of the total SME ma banking market, which is one point two billion approximately. So it's almost 3% of SME banking revenues could turn uh, to other service providers. Uh, and what are the uh, reasons for, for switching banks uh, uh, for UK SMEs? Obviously pricing matters, but uh, better online and uh, online service and functionality also matters. and. Uh, diversity of products that uh, the other banks didn't provide. So I think these are all uh, factors that uh, should be uh, considered by banks when they are thinking about serving the SME segment. And uh, one uh, last thing to mention is that SMEs uh, will be served uh, not only by service, not, not by specific service providers, but uh, SME needs will be uh, fulfilled and served by emerging SME bank, SME ecosystems where all service providers will come together uh, and, uh, and fulfill SME needs and the uh, customer uh, journeys in a joint offer. And 
SMEs will expect uh, this fully integrated platform, uh, not only for financial products, but uh, all the services and all, all the needs that I mentioned before. And, uh, and uh, more than half of the SME segment said that uh, they feel that uh, such an approach would be better for them than the current approach. Uh, more importantly, 22% uh, of SMEs think that such a platform could be provided by a bank. And most importantly, 17% of all SMEs would be willing to pay for such a platform. So uh, this is, I think, a clear message from the SME segment. And what are the choices here for banks? Uh, either banks start building their own platform or they can uh, choose and participate uh, in such a platform or alternatively, they can do both at the same time. But the most important thing is that the way SMEs are being served will drastically change in the future. And uh, now I will, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Ambar to explain to us what are the most uh, relevant use cases that banks are currently exploring uh, for POCs and POVs uh, on the Naivan platform and how, um, what is the process uh, for you to support the bank in this journey. Of course, thank you, Catalin. So I think just touching on Catalin's point of offering better digital experiences to SMEs, all of these use cases do fall under that umbrella. The first being customer acquisition. So under this, something like cash flow monitoring is a great example and using live insights and live data will help reduce payment fraud and also minimize costs overall. We've got a lot of banks interested in supporting SMEs with opening multi-currency accounts, as a lot of them, um, geographic expansion is a important part of their roadmap. Invoicing is of course involved here, and that's what Kathleen will go into more detail about later on in this webinar. The next sort of broad area is SME onboarding. And this is largely centered around reducing onboarding time and reducing cost and being able to offer sort of streamlined account opening services, as well as enhanced due diligence, KYC and AML. So overall, this helps not only improve compliance, but also helps improve the digital experience for the SMEs. Once again, on the digitizing and streamlining process side, we have the deposits use case. So this is leveraging open banking to enable central account hubs. This is leveraging banking as a service platforms to enable partners to open accounts. And the final use case we're seeing a lot of is SME lending. So this is leveraging alternative lending data to ensure SMEs have access to accessible, inclusive capital, and this process is a lot more efficient. So using alternate data will help the credit decisioning process as it's not sort of reliant on your typical profile, it's actually taking your customer and the fact they are an SME into account. So the data sources we've got here are e-commerce data and accountancing data. So these were the uh, main SME banking use cases that you support, and then uh, I would get into the invoicing. Part, yes, right? just before you do, I realized I missed your question on how banks actually work with these fintechs. So when a bank logs into our Discover platform, they're able to search by use case and search by tech provider. That's where, so for example, you can search SME lending, you have, say, 10 different tech providers that come up. You can click into them. You can understand the nuances, the niches, and how they differ. The next step to that would actually be going in and using their API key, which is authenticated through the NAO1 gateway, to actually bring them into a sandbox with relevant data and run that proof of concept. So it's a incredibly efficient process 
going from the typical 12 to 18 months without nail one, just down to about four to six weeks. Wow, that's a real, I mean, life-changing experience for banks' innovative departments, right? Yep, that's right. And the security, infosec and data teams are also much more comfortable because none of the data is customer data. It's all either synthetically generated by us for the use case or it's publicly available data. So that means there's no risk of data leakage when running a proof of concept with Nail one You also don't have to onboard the fintech into your four walls. You can run this test outside the bank which is why it's a preferred option for many of the banks, especially across the UK and the US. Yeah, I can I can confirm that uh, onboarding a fintech into a bank who doesn't have such a sandbox can be kind of a lengthy process. So Definitely, because uh, the onboarding process hasn't changed yeah. all that much since onboarding your Oracles, your SAPs and your IBMs. Yeah. Yes, so getting into the invoicing space, uh, we, as the provider of this uh, invoicing technology for banks, we think that uh, it makes perfect sense to uh, integrate core banking services and digital invoice man management services into banking because uh, this is a kind of a natural uh, connection between the two uh, areas and activities uh, as uh, payments and financing and uh, digital invoice management are both part of the purchase to pay process. So if a bank uh, launches such an integrated uh, solution, then it can serve uh, more effectively its SME uh, customer needs. And it is also a good uh, place to start building an ecosystem and become, becoming a financial one-stop shop. So we think that uh, for any bank who really wants to serve their SME customer base better, invoicing is the next uh, first or the yeah next best, best offer after the core banking services as, as a value-added service because each, uh, each uh, SME needs to do the invoicing task and need, needs to manage its cash flow, uh, both uh, containing the invoices and uh, the payment and financing activities. Uh, the other reason that we think it is a good offer that uh, it saves, so digital invoice management and digital banking together saves time for the SME customer, uh, I can tell it from my own experience that uh, even for a small SME like a Partner Hub, at least half a day, one day per month can be saved uh, such a solution, and uh, which means time saving on the SME side. It uh, is the same for the banks because if the bank has the digital invoice data, then it can also digitalize its uh, processes for payments and also invoice fi financing, meaning uh, only factoring or through the whole supply chain for supply chain and uh, trade finance activities. And invoice data also provides additional and richer data to personalize the SME banking experience. So overall, we think that uh, after the digital onboarding and after the core banking products that uh, Ambar just uh, uh, mentioned, uh, digital invoice management would or should be definitely considered by banks as a value-added service. So I don't know, Ambar, if you have uh, anything that you think that we missed uh, during the webinar. Um, if yes, then oh, I think we have that quite well. I think it'd be good to open to some questions if anyone has any. Obviously, if you are interested in these topics more in detail, we are happy to explain more in detail 
uh, on one-on-one -on -one sessions. Definitely. So also happy for any banks that are listening who are interested in SME use cases to drop me an email so we can provision you some access to our marketplace so you can go on and explore Partner Hub and other solutions. So if no questions today, then uh, we will uh, stop uh, recording the webinar and then the webinar and hope to have uh, oh someone is typing great so we will have a question i don't know Ambar, until the question arrives do you have uh, any specific uh, banks in the UK that uh, you had, I don't know, a very good experience with, or um, there is any experience that you could share with us today? Unfortunately, I am not allowed to name names, but we, um, oh, sorry, the question has just come in. Yes, so using Nail One, a bank can come in and can actually call in Partner Hub's API with the relevant data and run a proof of concept in a matter of weeks. This can be taken one step further where the bank has their own existing core banking platform and their own existing tech stubs. So what's used there is stubs of the core banking environment and any other applications that the Partner Hub APIs need to integrate with can be bought into the sandbox to create the bank's mock environment. Then you can not only run a POC on Partner Hub's solution, but you can actually see how Partner Hub's solution integrates within your four walls, which de-risks your integration and also will bring up any integration challenges you may run into post POC. So yeah, it's, it goes one step further than actually just testing does Partner Hub work and do you like them more than any other solution? You can actually see what does Partner Hub look like within your bank. So it makes it a lot easier when you actually decide to partner with Partner Hub and take it to that live sort of production environment. Samarak, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I can see another uh, question from Amrit. Uh, yes, uh, so we can obviously serve uh, non-bank financial service uh, providers. There, I think uh, if we are thinking about uh, specialized payment service providers, then we can uh, we can be there with the invoice data and then payments can be initiated or request to pay uh, messages can be initiated from the invoice data. If you are talking about specialized uh, lending institutions, then uh, also we can uh, have uh, the invoice data ready and be used by uh, the lenders to initiate the lending process. And uh, when the bank doesn't have its own invoicing solution, we can integrate very effectively with either third-party invoicing solutions or just grab the already existing uh, electronic invoice data or digital invoice data. So these are the uh, ways that Partner Hub can uh, provide support to specialized uh, financial services providers. Yes, Samarak, they can. So Nail One will work directly with you to actually bring in the relevant bits of your environment for this particular use case. That And that can change dependent on the use case, dependent on the tech provider you're testing. But that's something we work with the bank 
during implementation to create that mock environment as well as data to make sure you've got data relevant to your customers. Tamarack, I'm happy if we arrange a call offline with Catalan as well so we can really map out what this looks like. Yes, exactly. So, if no other questions, then uh, then we will end the webinar. Once again, thank you for attending. You will be able to access the webinar recording just after the webinar. Thank you very much.